bitching post, motherfucker. What? Days of our lives, days of our lives. <sighs> Where to begin? What to what to say? Okay, this first off I wanna give a shout out to Lauren Coslo, who plays Kate, Blue Streak Freak. I'm a Blue Streak Freak fan and I wanna give a shout out to her. I wanna give a shout out to uh Lauren Coslow's Twitter fan club, Blue Streak Freak. They just mentioned how um, Kate is not getting enough airtime, and I agree with that. I don't think she is. I think that she, especially now that Will got killed and Will's dead, <laughs> I think that she should be given her fair share of airtime for mourning Will, because she was his grandmother too. And Marlena got a good amount of mourning for Will. She got a good amount of airtime. So I don't see why Kate couldn't get equal amount. She got a little sliver of it, but I feel like she should have gotten a little bit more. So yeah, we want more Kate. So Blue Streak Freak Attack. I don't know what we have to do, but we need to get Kate some more airtime. So somebody do something. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about uh, Oh, oh, days of our lives. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Now that, okay, I called it already. I said they weren't gonna catch Ben, and sure enough, they haven't caught him yet, and Chad got super beat up, and his uh, beautiful blue eye, yeah. Uh, he, got, he got beat up pretty bad, to the point that he's in a, he's in a coma right now. He had it out with Ben, and uh, Ben was the tougher dude, and he just fought dirty, I think. And I, I think he pumped steroids or something. They don't show that in, in the story, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Like, he's just too built. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so he basically tried to kill Chad, because Chad figured it out, and Chad was like, you know, trying to protect Abby, and Abby wasn't there now. I don't know why Abby is just so brainwashed by Ben. I guess that's what's wrong with her. She can't see. Couldn't she see the... <sighs> Chad's on the floor, almost dying. The other guy, you can clearly see he's barely beat at all. I'm sorry, but Chad's not as tough. So why couldn't she see that, uh, oh my god, it looks like he got hurt more. I think this guy is the killer, or this guy is the one that tried to kill him. Like, you know, I don't understand that. So, okay, now I want to talk about something that I want to bitch about, and what I want to bitch about really is Sammy. I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't watch the whole week. I relied on my Twitter feed so I could be reading up on it and getting the recaps that way because I don't... I don't feel like I, at first, okay, when, okay, so Sammy arrives in Salem, magically, like the last, the, the first thing I heard was, um, Lucas was calling her and telling her about, he had really bad news, and it was about Will, and then all of a sudden, she just shows up, she just magically appears, it's like, there she was, in the station, you never saw the journey. You never saw her take the phone call. You never saw any of that. Like, they just didn't bother filming it. And I think maybe it's because uh, Allison is only there for a few days. Maybe her contract is just for a few days. This is my speculation. This is just my theory. And so they're like, oh, let's cram everything that we can in a short amount of time because she's not going to be there for long. So let's do that. So yeah, that's the way it seems to me. Or there's like a transporter room inside Roman's office or something. It's like she just like mad, not even, okay, even in the soap opera world, I think they have to go through a while before they can fly to a place. Sonny even got there fast. But Sonny, at least they showed him in Paris, in his apartment, 
and he answered the phone. So it's like you at least got that part of it. They don't seem to pace the story well when it comes to Sammy because I guess they're pressed for time. So they just had her appear. Like, here she comes. She just like walked right in. Like, ooh, here I am. And she walked in like a fucking zombie. She's like, she's like a robot. She just has no feelings, no emotions, no nothing. I have to say, I like her this way. I like her calm. She's very much more annoying when she's screaming and yelling. So in a way, it was it was refreshing. She even looked like, yeah, you know, she had a better hairstyle and stuff. Like she she was dressed better. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> She had a better wardrobe. I mean, that's all I can really say. But other than that, you know, she just was playing the part of I have no feelings. I'm in shock. I'm dead inside. I don't know what to do or whatever. Like, that was how she was trying to portray the character. And I guess, like, I guess that's how they write it for her to be. Because she can really act if she wanted to. I guess she has to do with what they give her. Because I, I have to say, I like her this way, I like her calm, except for when it got weird. And when it got weird was when they went to the morgue, <laughs> they went to the morgue and, and she's like, I knew it was going to happen that way. She kind of like leaned over Will's body and, and Lucas, oh Lucas made me cry. And I don't, I don't usually cry when I watch the show, but Lucas played a really awesome part of, of mourning his, his son. Good job, man. You made me cry. Damn you. <laughs> but okay, so yeah, um, the weirdness was when they were in the morgue and she decides to say some weird, uh, they brought up something about him learning how to dance and like they're trying to go through memories of, of Will's life or whatever. But then she, she leans up to him, she leans down and she says, she mentions something about you'll be, you'll be safe, go to sleep, the tigers aren't going to get you now or something. I'm like, what tigers? What is she talking about? How come I've never heard of this before? This is the first time I hear of tigers. What, did Will have a fear of tigers when he was a little kid? Like, wh where did the tiger thing come from? Like, that just, that just, that just, really? Does it need to happen? I, I didn't understand that one. <laughs> so then, okay. So Sammy uh, is like dead inside or something and she's just staring into space and not really communicating with people and has has no real reaction hasn't really cried like this this started happening like in the beginning when she first got there so okay I knew it wasn't gonna last then she goes into some crazy psycho mode where she finds out that Chad is in the hospital and she tries to suffocate him with a pillow like she just tries to kill him and she doesn't know how to do it and I guess Marlena saves the day but that was pretty stupid how she how she wanted to do that. <laughs> but that okay, that's typical Sammy though. She always wants revenge. Okay, so now <laughs> suddenly I guess Marlena had all these letters that she had been saving. <laughs> and she gives them to her and one of them comes from EJ. One of them is from EJ. Wow, how did this happen? Like all of a sudden Let's not let's not mourn Will anymore. Let's worry about EJ. Let's 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 try to find out where EJ could be, or what is this about? And it, I know what it is. It's 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 not from EJ. EJ's dead. EJ's not coming back. This is a trick, and Sammy just doesn't get it. Like always, she's jumping to conclusions. And you know the funny thing is, she mourned her son what five minutes? Like she she completely forgot about him like I knew she would. She completely forgot about him and now it's all about EJ. Oh, where is this? This is EJ. It feels like EJ. I have the feeling that it's EJ. Yeah. It's a fucking letter. <laughs> I don't know. So now she's going into this rampage where she wants to... She can't even wait to put Will in the ground. She wants to already go and look for EJ or find out if this is really from EJ. Oh, EJ is telling her all these lies about how it's, if he's dead, it's because of Stefano. And, it, and then she turns around and tells Eric. And Eric is like, I like Eric when he's drunk. Eric got drunk. Eric's like, you know what, forget it. I don't care. I'm going to get drunk. 
So he goes to the bar, he gets drunk, he says he's celebrating. I like this Eric. I, I think he's cool. Not so stuffy. But more wise for some strange reason. So he turns around and he tells her, uh, you know, this is probably forged. It's probably not even from him. Like you're jumping to conclusions. You want it to be from him. Everything in the letter is everything you wanted to say. It's what you want to hear. You know, remember why you came here. You came here to bury your son. Like he even had to remind her because apparently she forgot all about that. She's just going off half cocked trying to look for a BJ. It's like, you know what I don't like? It's like there's other stories going on. Meanwhile, everything is being set on hold for her and her amazing discovery of there oh my god I got something from EJ a magic letter like her magic entrance like it's just it's so magical like oh let me get on a unicorn <laughs> yeah that is not from EJ and she's gonna find out and I'm just guessing because I saw the preview from long ago and it was kind of jumbled in with like pieces of everything that's happening and it just happened so quick that it's hard to tell what came from where but I know she gets kidnapped I saw that part. I know she gets confronted by Andre, so I'm thinking it's 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 Andre. <laughs> and I love I love Andre. I love Theo. Is that how you say his name? I don't know how to say his name, but I love him. He he's an awesome actor. Um, I love his accent. I love his style. I love those Armani suits. I love the way he dresses and he's just got, he's got class, he's a cool cat. But yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the letter is from him and he's pretending to be EJ just to see what she's going to do and she's taking the bait because, well, she's silly Sammy, she's going to believe whatever. And that's what's happening. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't say for sure, I didn't see the spoilers. So I can't, I'm not, uh, I'm only recapping what happened for this week and not even everything. Just, just bits and pieces. <laughs> I can only, I can only speak for, uh, for what I feel. And I feel like the only reason I know in my heart that EJ would never write a letter to her is because if he was alive or if he somehow wanted to leave a letter, it would have been to Abby because he and Abby had something he would have tried to connect with her. Like I don't like how they, they tore them apart and made it look like uh, what they had didn't mean anything, you know. And there's another there's another group of followers of another fan base out there that I will not mention their name, but they're a little bit psycho about EJ and Sammy. So much to the point that if you tweet anything on Twitter about Ejabi, they come out of the woodwork and they want to like attack you and stuff because they're so <laughs> delusional. They're delusional. Yeah. I'm going to use that word because that word was used on me today. So yeah, they are delusional and uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I think it's funny. I think it's amusing because uh, they're going to find out that there is no reuniting of those two people. It's just not going to happen. AJ's not coming back. And it's Andre. I guess they're too dull to figure that one out. That's just so easy. Like, I don't know how they could tell. Like, that's just so easy. Rafe is acting like a Columbo, and I like that. And I'm hoping that he figures this out. I wanted him to look around. I wanted him to look around the apartment so he could see, like, did, would everything get cleaned up? Like, I didn't notice. I guess it did. But there was, like, it was such a bloody battle between Ben and Chad that you would think that when he was in there, he would have noticed, you know, like, all the scuffle that had happened and probably put two and two together and figure out something. There's got to be something there that ties Ben to killing Will because it happened in Ben's apartment. I hope that Abby figures it out. I know she's probably going to eventually. Yeah, I think uh, I think Sunny is leaving next week. I think Clyde is leaving next week. That's, that's, I think that's the way I figured it out. I think I read it somewhere. That their last air dates are going to be next week. And if that's true, then I guess Clyde's going to get killed, or they're going to send him away 
for a very long time. I'm not sure how they're going to do that. It's going to be interesting. <clears throat> but um, I suspect there's going to be a funeral for Will next week. Maybe Sammy will be there. Maybe she won't. Maybe she'll be on a wild goose chase trying to find out if that letter really came from EJ because that's all she's concerned about. I guess she doesn't really care now what happened to Will. I was just really sad. Like, I wish that they would handle it differently. Like, I don't know who writes this stuff. I know there's new writers. That part I know. But I kind of wish that they would go about it differently than, than how they do it. You know, that's just my opinion. Just being a fan and being one who sees the show, I'm just saying I'm kind of like dissatisfied with how some of this stuff happens. I kind of expected it to be this way, like I kind of expected for Sammy to go off the deep end at some point. I didn't know how it was going to happen and then they just blatantly throw that letter in there so it just makes me happy to know that she's going to find out it's not really from EJ and that right there just makes me happy. Because if EJ comes back, I want him to come back and fight for Abby. That's what I want. I love Chad, don't get me wrong. Love those icy blue eyes. But that would be more exciting if EJ were to come back. And not, you know, pretend like, oh, Sammy's the love of his life because, I mean, come on. If that would be true, then he wouldn't have all that hot chemistry with Abby. I don't know, that's just, that's just how I see it. I'm not the only one. So. Yeah, it has to be said. I predict that Andre is going to kidnap Sammy and he's going to tell her, aha, you fell for it. You know, there is this was just a test and you failed. You wanted to, you know, do something against my father. So I'm going to, uh, you know, take care of you. Take you far, far away, away from here because nobody wants you here. And that's what I hope he does. I hope he just, you know, Bye-bye, Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I forget, I want to give some more shout-outs. I want to give a shout-out to Phyllis, my girl Phyllis. She's also a big Andre fan and uh, Tony fan. So from way back in the day, I'm going to give what's up to Phyllis. She might be a, a guest bitching poster in the future. So yeah, what's up? And I want to give a shout out to B and J, Bridget, my girl. What's up? So I'd, I've almost forgot. I didn't want to forget. So this is, these are my shout outs. And of course, a shout out to lovely Ejabi group on Facebook that I'm in. Everybody in the group. And Wayne, Daniel Berard, I want to give a what's up to you because you're awesome. He's a gifted writer. He writes a lot of Ejabi fan fiction. And I have collabed with him being an artist on my spare time and my spare spare time and many other things that I involve myself in but yeah I've uh, helped illustrate a lot of his work and we have the, all that stuff on Tumblr so yeah I want to give a what's up to everybody keep watching subscribe we have a Twitter now for bitching posts so check that out and we also have uh, Instagram accounts of Pink Bunny has her own and I have my own on Cloud Girl but it, we have different names because it's, it's all about bitching. It's bitching post related. So everything that happens on there goes straight to the Twitter. I'll put the link on here so that way you can find it and tweet along with us. Subscribe! Like! Do it!